Hello and welcome to KJ's Kitchen. I am in an extra special kitchen today. Mm. Uh, this is my Hi. absolute best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you're not in KJ's Kitchen. She's in my kitchen. We are in Nikki Dinky's Kitchen mm -hmm. today and I cannot be more delighted because if you don't know this girl, mm. I'm so excited to introduce you to her. You may have already seen Nikki on Food Network at Food Network Star and also the cooking channel at Junk Food Flip. Uh, and if you haven't gotten your hands on her cookbook yet. Ooh, you mean this one, Kelly Jo? <laughs> <laughs> I strongly urge you to make sure this is a part of your kitchen cookbook library. Meat on the side. So, what I love, mm -hmm. and now I've been mm -hmm. Nikki's friend for, I think I'm aging myself, possibly 18 to 20 years now. Um, Okay. Is aging, it I, aging all of us. Um, yeah, I it guess might so. Be very possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we were much younger. Two thousand and one <laughs> or two thousand and two was. I guess when you're right. It all yeah, started. yeah, yeah. Um, and mm. Nikki, I, you even had the nickname Picky Nikki as a kid. Always. She was. She didn't have a huge variety in her mm -hmm. diet, and so I loved being yeah. a, a, an influence on you yeah. of exploring. And so next thing you know, she's more than exploring, she's a chef and yeah. she's incredible. And the meat on the side, if you'll give a little concept for everyone. Of yeah, what I mean about. guys, like I didn't eat a single vegetable or protein until I was 20. Um, so I'm definitely someone that, you know, can be an advocate for, you can learn to eat healthy and eat more vegetables and things like that um, at any point in your life. So I always believe that the more times that you try things, the more that you'll eventually learn to like them. So that's kind of what I did. I slowly started eating more and more stuff. Kelly Joe would slide things across the table and be like, just try it. And I'm like, ugh. Um, and I really just discovered that my palate started to expand and I really loved food more and more. So why not cook some of it? And that's why I started um, cooking. And since then, really my whole you know, cooking philosophy has been this meat on the side, which is just all about having the vegetables be the entree portion of your plate and making them interesting and unique so they can be that entree portion. And I don't use more than four ounces of meat in any of my recipes. Um, so it's just all about, yeah, having more vegetables on there instead of just that big, you know, steak and then some steamed broccoli on the side. Let's mm -hmm. make that broccoli exciting. And what's the KJ Kitchen motto? More green, more lean. Mm. Green is lean, guys. The more vegetables you put in your body, the more enzymes, the easier digestion you're going to have naturally. Mm -hmm. and the more alive you're going to be. I'm maybe. telling you guys, every time, because I've had quite a few babies <laughs> in the last couple of years, um, and every time I'm really looking to slim down and like think about my health, I don't tend to really ever count calories. I don't really own a scale, but I simply try to eat more nutritiously. So I'm always trying to sneak more vegetables in, more everything, and I find that when I'm eating really well and doing my shakes, my everything, that's when my body starts to be revving up, and I usually do kind of slim back down. Not exactly to pre-pregnancy, <laughs> listen, some things change, but I really do find that that's the way that I make a difference when I'm trying to kind of think about my health. Yes, yeah. don't count your calories, make your calories count. That's the concept. Ooh. Trademark! <laughs> so, what, we, what, what recipe are we doing today so, in Nikki's Kitchen? <laughs> this is the red cabbage and raspberry grilled cheese. I believe that vegetables should elevate a dish. And so, of course, we're going to get all the benefits from red cabbage, which really you can talk about. is so interesting. Um, but what I love about this is that we're talking about making just an ultimate grilled cheese because that cabbage gives us texture. We're gonna have jam in there. It's gonna play nice with that cheese and it really is gonna be amazing. Shall we make it? Yay! <laughs> I cannot wait. And who doesn't eat a good grilled cheese? And if you're not, don't, don't sacrifice the good stuff when you're on a health journey. I think moderation and balance is key. We're gonna teach you a couple elements to make your grilled cheese a little healthier. And let's even start with Mm -hmm. adding the veggie, right? The more color in your vegetables, the better for you. So we're gonna rock the red cabbage more than the green cabbage, and it's also a different flavor, especially mm -hmm. when we're sauteing it and bringing in that jam. I'm so excited. So Nikki's gonna put me to work in the corner. <laughs> I was like, I can do it if you want. <laughs> um, and we're gonna finely shred, or finely yeah. chop. Yeah, listen, you might be able to find this pre-done at your grocery store. You could also definitely use a mix of red cabbage and your regular green cabbage, you know, what you would find to make coleslaw. You can just do that if you're not feeling like cutting your own. I couldn't find any of that at the grocery store, and I do love just red cabbage. 
So I thought I would buy maybe half of this. Yeah, whole. I would say start with half, and then we're just gonna cut it down into those nice little ribbons, um, and we'll see how far that we get. You know, this is also a sandwich kind of lunch thing, so I don't like to be super structured with it. Anything will work. Um, you know, if it has a little less, a little more cabbage, it's all gonna be delicious. Yeah, exactly. Yes, perfect. And so we start with just a little bit of olive oil, just to give um, you know something in the pan that red cabbage to play with. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of playing going on today. I've already talked about the cheese playing with the cabbage, and now the oil is in there. So everyone's I'm, having fun. Yeah, can, <laughs> I'm gonna have Nikki share really quickly because you're gonna get your hands on this cookbook because it's an amazing uh, addition to your kitchen and your recipes you're using. Oh wait, I have an idea, Kelly. What if we give one away? <laughs> so while we're here, um, I will sign a copy and KJ can take it home with her. And then maybe we can do something fun in the comments. That would be amazing. Yeah, so. I think, um, uh, you know what? Uh, sorry, you, this is your show. Sorry. Please, please. No, I did not know this was happening. I the love way that I like to give away books. Um, is that you can leave something in the comments, and I actually find it great to read those comments back later. So, um, speaking of red cabbage and cabbage in general, not the most familiar vegetable. If you guys want to just comment with any way that you like to eat cabbage, I think that would be really fun to read back, awesome. and that would be some good inspiration. And if you leave a comment, you'll be entered to win, and then she can just later pick a winner. And I'll sign it for you, too. I'm so blessed. Cool. Okay, you great. are so blessed. Fine. Um, but, but if you don't start cutting that cabbage, I'm never going to have have any lunch. I'm putting so. some in the pan already. And we'll you know get what? Going. You, can, you can do it um, chopped up like that, or you can even leave it long. Sliced and but, long. You know, yeah, and this is, you know what though? As I'm seeing her chop it a little bit more finely, I'm realizing that this is much easier to kind of just run your knife through it than get those long ribbons. So I think the way you're doing it is perfect, Kelly. So good. Now, if you don't do olive oil, you could be using avocado oil as a substitute. Sure. What do you like best? Avocado oil, coconut oil, grapeseed oil? Well, I, I'm mostly avocado oil. When I'm doing sauteing, I do olive oil when it's raw, like whether for salads and mm -hmm. toppings um, or baking, I do olive oil. Mm -hmm. Coconut oil, I really find adds flavor, the coconut flavor. So unless you're looking for that, I leave it out when I'm sauteing. So I think it's great with That's chicken. That's something that I think too. Um, People are using coconut oil, left, right, and upside down. I like coconut oil, but it tastes like coconut. Yes. <laughs> and so I, and maybe it's because I'm not the biggest coconut fan in the first place. I just find that I have to really, I think that would be perfect, we'll do half. I find that I really want to choose to have that flavor of coconut in whatever I'm making. So sometimes I use coconut oil when I want that little bit of coconut in there. But it's not necessarily my go-to neutral oil because I don't necessarily love, love that taste of coconut. And it, mm -hmm. it just leaves a taste, you know? Yeah, it's not neutral. That's the thing. So I neutral. think it's great on sweet potato. So I do like my uh, coconut oil on sweet potato. Oh, that's here's, a good here's something about coconut oil. If you are really gung-ho about it because it's all the craze, you might be reaching for a high-quality MCT oil if you want it to be neutral. So that's that's the option. Is it's not going to have the coconut flavor. Mm -hmm. um, if you're using MCT, which is coconut oil, just not unrefined. You learn something new every day. <laughs> you wanted my bread, don't you? Here, okay. <laughs> we're hungry, and that's why we're making this, because we cannot wait to eat these grilled cheese sandwiches. We have been waiting to do this Let's far, talk about far this. too long. Talk about your bread, guys. Um, if you've been tuning into KJ's Kitchen, you know I am a fan and advocate of sourdough. So yummy. Because whether you like it or not, gluten's gonna cut your gut. And if you can pre-ferment so your gluten, which is sourdough is pre-fermented gluten in here, you are gonna have an easier digestion with this bread. So go for sourdough, and it's not created equally. You're not gonna go to the aisle of the bread aisle where it's mm -hmm. loaded with preservatives. You're either gonna get it from your local bakery or you're gonna get it from the bakery section in your grocery store. Because we like to avoid preservatives. Yeah, I should do this from the bakery section. Um, I hate that about gluten because, in general, bread and me, we're also <laughs> friends. Um, so that's a really hard one for me. So I actually love that idea of sourdough being a little bit better because I also like sourdough. So it's like mm -hmm. another reason to get it. And it's so know? good toasted and on a sandwich. So get those comment fields going so we can give this oh, yeah, away. Oh, so yes, guys, if you're just tuning in, all you got to do is leave a comment your favorite way to have cabbage. Um, and we'll choose one of you guys to win a signed copy of my book.
it's incredible. It's gonna be great. So let's take it. Let me just show you maybe. Yeah. yeah. I probably should make sure I don't burn myself. I have a tendency just to try, like, eh, it's not too, too hot. And <laughs> let's be safe. So you can kind of see a little bit closer. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, the cabbage is definitely shrinking down quite a bit. We want it to be, you know, nice and sauteed in there. Um, and look how beautiful and purple oh, that the is, color. Too. So I think this looks pretty good. Um, let me just, here we go. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to give it just a half a second, half a second more. Um, and then we're going to add in some jam. Did you hear that jam? <laughs> because think about it. This is what I like to think about. Who doesn't like to go out? A glass of wine. You get a cheese plate, you know, you're being all fancy. You got your cheese plate, they give you some honey on the side of your cheese plate, and they give you some jam. Mm. Because they want you to pair that all together. They want you to grab some bread and put some cheese on it, a schmear of jam, and oh, yum, with some champagne. Cheers. So I kind of took that same idea of a cheese plate and just translated it into this grilled cheese. Amazing. So we're pairing our cheese with some nice jam and we're using the cabbage as a vehicle to really hold it all together and put that jam on the sandwich and give it texture and some nice flavor. Um, so my recipe calls for raspberry jam. I had triple berry in my fridge. You can really use anything that you want. This recipe is really versatile, so don't be mm, late in black. Into whatever you got. Oh. I could imagine blackberry being a delightful. I love cookie with blackberry jam. I find that it's a it pairs well with savory things. So now mm -hmm. I'm just gonna add in some jam. So I told Nikki before we started the segment that the Danish, you know, if you've tuned in and saw the pork with rokol, the red cabbage, is a Danish traditional side dish, and we. My husband um, infuses it with blackberry jam and it really brings a new element to the cabbage. And sure, you can get away with doing it without. Most of those recipes, you don't see jam or red wine in it. We put both of those into ours. So when, when I read through her recipe, I got really excited. That is a mm -hmm. really favorite combo of ours. It's so fun. You know, I feel like, well, there are some new things out there, but a lot of these things, you know, in different cultures, different cuisines have been paired together. It might just be something that's not necessarily on your radar. Mm -hmm. um, so it's fun to try new things because you might actually really enjoy some of these pairings. And speaking of wine, not exactly wine, <laughs> um, maybe kind of super fermented wine, um, I'm going to put in some vinegar. I've got some white wine vinegar. Same thing. The recipe calls for champagne. You can use whatever you have. And this is just going to brighten it up. I don't the want too much sweet guys calls for champagne vinegar, not mm -hmm. champagne. Although, if you're uh, anything like us, you might want to pour some bubbles and drink that too. <laughs> I find vinegars are a really fun thing to play with, especially if you're making a lot of your own salad dressings. Um, you know, you might be just kind of a red wine, white wine, vinegar kind of family, and those are great. But I find that once you start really getting some champagne vinegar, raspberry vinegar, mm. fig, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of things that can lend you know, another layer of flavor to whatever you're cooking. And you're bringing the acid to the sweetness, mm -hmm. and that's going to do magic in your mouth, guys. I am so excited to taste this sandwich. Exactly, I don't want all jam in here. You know, the jam is kind of sweet and heavy. The cheese is kind of heavy. We want something mm -hmm. to brighten it up. So we're just gonna have a little acid in there. That's too good. So and this looks great. I think we can almost start. Oh, yeah. Let me give it one more show to our friends at home. Okay. Oh! I mean, if you guys, oh yeah, now you can see that oh, color. Look yeah. at that. The more you cook it down, oh, my you'll goodness. see that beautiful color, guys. It, and now it smells, you smell the vinegar, you smell that jam, and the jam is also gonna make sure that that color really comes home. Because it's gonna coat, you know, the purple in purple. It's gonna be very purple mm -hmm. and very delicious. And now here's the thing about cabbage, guys. Um, it is a gassier food, but the fact that we're cooking it down, we're going to make it easier to digest for you. So it's different than coleslaw when you're eating it raw. And if you're not a cabbage lover, if you're like, I don't do coleslaw, I don't do sauerkraut, the red cabbage when cooked down like this is a different animal. I urge you and challenge you to try this out. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be different. It's not that simple. You know, I think there are so many things I had. Yeah, oh yeah, we should definitely have cheese here. You get some bread. Mm -hmm. um, I tried, what was I gonna say? I tried, oh, eggplant. So I had some fried breaded eggplant yesterday um, and with this really fun, sweet and spicy sauce. And it just reminded me that 
Don't ever think you don't love something. There's probably a way that you can prepare it in a way that you love. There's not a person out there that wouldn't have loved the eggplant that I had just had. So, you know, remember there's always I'm some new way a to new way to try I'm sensing a new recipe things. next mm. time I'm in Nikki's hey. kitchen. <laughs> cheese would be important. <laughs> We're getting the cheese while I prep the bread. Now, here's another thing Nikki and I mentioned before we started. Uh, we didn't have any butter that was at room temp, meaning spreadable. So she mm -hmm. said, have you ever substituted spreadable butter for mayonnaise? And I was like, absolutely. I've never <laughs> even thought of that. And she said it's a quick trick that she does. And of course, we're using a clean mayo, guys. Um, let's talk about it real quick. Yes, it's organic. This one comes from Whole Foods. So organic being important, meaning all the ingredients are organic in it. But when you read an ingredient list, like mayo, you can read it and say, are all of these ingredients that I would have to actually use in my kitchen to put into a bowl and create mayo myself? Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> There's nothing on this list that you're like, what is the eight and eight and what's that number? What's an E5? E5, I don't know what that is, but it's in a lot of mayos. I read labels, guys. So this is a clean mayo. We're gonna smear it on the bread and it will behave as butter. And I'm sure, this is my first time trying, it will give it a little tanginess that you don't get from butter. I mean, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, thank you. I didn't see that. It's so good, and you can really easily spread it to every inch, and it gives you that richness, that butteriness that you're used to. Um, but yes, a tiny bit of tang. I think I like it better than butter. Don't tell Ooh, butter. We're still don't friends. Don't tell butter. <laughs> so now, Is that good? It yeah, sure. Yeah, you want to do? Um, yeah, we'll do it on the opposite side. So the recipe calls for some fontina. Um, you can also use mozzarella. I have some Havarti. I don't know. We're gonna see what I'm feeling. Um, but you can use whatever you want. I like Fontina because it's kind of mozzarella's older cousin. A little bit more interesting, a little bit more something to it, a little more, you know, cheesy, feedy, like in a good way, feediness. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but you can use just regular mozzarella too if that's what you got on hand. So we're just going to layer this with our raspberry jam cabbage with a little bit of vinegar in there. And it's going to come together. And I'm telling you, it's simple. It's like five ingredients, but it's just the right ones. Okay, right, perfect. On. Yes. I had to Schmier. decide which sides oh would be outside. It, it took a little second to figure out which <laughs> side of the bread to put it on. I was like, wait a minute. Now, okay. I'm not going to be skimpy with my cheese because it mm -hmm. is a grilled cheese after all. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the good thing about having other elements besides just cheese in the sandwich is that you probably could get away with a little bit less cheese, um, you know, if you're thinking about cutting back a little bit, um, and you're not going to notice a huge difference. But why would you? Cheese ah, is heaven. <laughs> can, I agree. can I hear in the comment field, aside from how you're using cabbage, because you want to win this cookbook, can you please also tell me if you are a cheese fanatic? Because I find people are either are or are not, or mm -hmm. they've just completely restricted their diet so much they think it's sinful to eat cheese. Um, but if you've, if you've subscribed to the segment, KJ's Kitchen, you know that animal fats and plant fats are not the culprit of getting us fat. Um, it may be, <laughs> Ooh, she's, well, she's not sharing. <laughs> We're gonna have all the cheese that you want. It's the trans fats that are the problem, guys. So you're not gonna go for the processed baked goods and crappy things in packages that are all loaded with those nasty uh, fats and sugars. <gasps> Who's getting excited? <laughs> so we're just putting mm, this sauteed cabbage it's got our vinegar in it. It's got that jam. You can use raspberry. I had a triple berry, so why not? And we're going to put that a good healthy amount. And it's amazing how much cabbage this was when we started out. Oh, yeah. I'd say that per sandwich, we're looking at at least a quarter, um, head, a quarter of a head of, oh my gosh. A quarter head of cabbage. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so it's a lot of cabbage. And so it really cooks down, and it's going to melt in here. You just wait. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get this going. I'm gonna start with one. Okay. I recently moved from an apartment to a home. A beautiful home. Thank in a you. beautiful neighborhood. <laughs> and so I've always been really bare bones in my kitchen, which in some ways is great because, you know, I, I, not everyone out there has all these like fancy things. But when I say bare bones, I also mean that I have very few pans. <laughs> so right now I've got my, I've pretty much I'm using my big skillet, so we've got to go to a little one. So I'm going to do it in batches here, and I'm going to make yours in just a second. I'm we can share. Yeah. So Nikki was in 
Manhattan, like in a tiny little apartment. And this mm -hmm. home here is beautiful. It's my first visit here, and I'm so blessed to be out here in Port Washington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're out in Long Island, which is, if you guys are familiar, it's about 30, 35 minutes outside of the city. So it's not too far, but it is a whole different scene. Uh, I had twins recently, so we were ready for a new scene. Um, but it's so interesting just, you know, like having more space and things have been really, really busy. Um, you know, as far as having more babies and moving and oh. um, <laughs> So I feel like now that we're eight months in, how is that possible? Um, I feel like for the first time I'm starting to cook a lot. Like not a lot. I should take that back, but cooking a little at least. You know, we actually have kids that are all going to bed and, and for the most part sleeping. And so I'm just starting to finally really use my space in my kitchen and start to enjoy it. Um, and it's just so fun to be creating again. I mean, we went through a long period of not even takeout because there's no good takeout around here um, or, or delivery. But we, you know, we're doing things in the freezer and whatnot. And it's so nice just to be able to have a minute to cook something. And I think recipes like this are a good reminder. It doesn't take a ton of time. I mean, if we're not yeah. talking like we are, it's, just, it's really, this is an easy lunchtime thing. Um, and I just, I'm telling you, I feel better when I'm, for the most part, feeding myself and cooking for myself. And for it's those worth beautiful the investment. children. Yeah. Guys, happy mom. Healthy meals, that's where it's at. And I'll tell you, if you're not subscribed already to Nikki Dinky's blog or her oh. Facebook fan page, it's Nikki Dinky Cooking. And she even posts amazing things that you can prep for your kids, sneaking in the vegetables so that they don't even notice they're eating them, like your broccoli tots, your uh, spinach muffins. Right? Hello. So, so good. you should be subscribed to her blog and follow and like her fan page, Nikki Dinky Cooking. For sure, yeah, I love, you know, I mean, listen, I like the idea of like trying to give a kid the real thing and make them eat it, but sometimes your kids don't eat it, um, or even myself, you know, so I make something, it's a spinach muffin, it's literally taking oatmeal, so you just take oats, spinach, carrots, a little bit of maple syrup, and bananas, you put it in a blender, and it makes the most delicious muffins, they're on the slightly denser side, mm -hmm. but they're mm -hmm. so, so yummy, and my daughter loves them, and I actually love them, because I feel like, I love to get veggies in my breakfast. So if I can eat that in the morning, I have to almost remind myself that I just ate spinach, I just ate carrots, and a mm -hmm. lot of it. So I do love to, you know, eat my veggies the good old-fashioned way, but I think it's great to constantly kind of be sneaking them in there in different yes. ways. Because the more you give that flavor, even if it does have a little mask of banana or oats on it, the body responds and the body knows what it wants. So it's all about nourishment, guys. So if you set your kids up with that palate, even if it's not direct, here, eat your boring carrots or your boring peas, and you're giving it to them in other ways, even infiltrating it into the smoothies, their body knows the goodness. And when you do offer it up in a little bit more of a basic way, they're going to be a lot more ready to eat it in that way because their body says yes, mm -hmm. whether their brain does or not. When I was learning to eat vegetables for the first time, I really felt like it took me somewhere between 30 and 50 times to really go from hating something to to liking it to loving it. Um, I just, it was all about that repetition. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like you have something you don't like, even olives right now, I still don't like olives. But I know if I continued to eat them, I would get over that like ugh, taste. Because I'm telling you, I felt that way about almost every food. So you will get over it. Yep. And yes, sneaking it in there is just gonna help you take those steps you know, towards that goal. I'm gonna give Nikki a challenge. It's gonna be the olive challenge because I know she could take an olive and change it in a dish so that she's gonna love it. I know. So I'm actually going to challenge her to come up with an awesome dish. And I recommend her starting with Kalamata olive. I find that to be the most enjoyable olive and very versatile, great in pastas, great in salads. Agreed. But for now, let's eat grilled cheese. Look, oh man, I feel like, oh no, here, here's what you wanna see. There you go, there you go. Um, it's beautiful, it's melty, oh, we're going to cut it, we are going to eat it, and it's going to be great. Here, let me put you here. Mm -hmm. Safety first. Um, oh, I can smell it. Okay, so we'll take a little, maybe I can show you a little bit of that inside. So we've got that cheese, you've got the red cabbage in there. It is so good. And look how beautifully brown that is because of that mayo. Every little inch. Smells so good. Mm. Mm. It makes me happy. Mm. 
I mean, mm. and you know, because sometimes when you eat something rich and heavy, like a grilled cheese or a really cheesy pasta, you know, sometimes after your like fifth bite, sixth bite, it gets kind of boring. This doesn't get boring because you're constantly kind of awakening your taste buds with that cabbage, Different with that jam element. and that vinegar. The texture of this red cabbage or radicchio is amazing. It's not overly crunchy. It's a, a mm. soft crunch, if I say that properly. Mm -hmm. And you pick up a on little texture, a little the texture. Berries. I pick up a little seediness mm -hmm. from the berries, which adds another level of crunch, <gasps> but such a good flavor. Now. I hope you've been telling us how you use your cabbage because we're giving away this cookbook. Mm. Show the cookbook one more time for people who've joined later. So guys, all you gotta do in the comments, tell us your favorite way to eat cabbage. And we'll choose a winner. I'll sign it for you. It's gonna be great. Um, oh my goodness, this yes. is so good. If this, if this recipe serves you, mm -hmm. you're gonna share this to your wall. Mm -hmm. You're gonna tag a friend who you think this recipe could also serve. Mm. You're gonna tune in every Wednesday at 12 o'clock on Get KJ Fit Fan Page for KJ's Kitchen. Happy mom serving up healthy meals from my kitchen or Nikki's kitchen uh, to, yours. to yours. Have a fantastic Wellness Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in. Bye guys.